Okay, God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to make a quick video discussing polygamy and how does God see it? When we touch on polygamy, we have to consider the fact that there were many, several pagans who got converted. And so scripture doesn't really drive um, emphatically um, black and white with polygamy in the New Testament. However, it does say in the Old Testament that you are not to multiply wives. And he was talking to, um, and this was um, spoken in Deuteronomy. And this is, this is the thing, right? We see that they did it anyway, right? And so we see that David did it. We see um, Solomon did it. Um, and I'm sure others. But for the most part, here's the thing though, right? We have to question, okay, well, then why did God tell David through Nathan that I would have, you know, given you, given whom, basically giving you whatever you asked if you asked for another wife um, in regards to when King David took, uh, what's her name, um, Bathsheba from Uriah. So why would God say that, right? See, here's the thing, right? When You got to be careful when you ask God for things because God will allow you to have things, but that doesn't mean it was, it was his will. So we want to stay in, 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 in tune with his will, in line with his will. Um, is polygamy a salvation issue? I'm not going to say it is, but I'm also not going to go out of my way and say too much because... Scripture does say, um, you know, that the bishops should have one one wife, the deacons as well, one wife, um, things of that nature. But you see in Deuteronomy, it said the same thing. And they still, it said that you, sh you couldn't have more, more than one wife. And they still, you know, did it. And, he's, and God still allowed it. We know that King David is a man of God's own heart. So if we're going to see that, and then we're going to see the opposite then, and then we look now and see if saints do the opposite, then what are the conclusions that we come with, all right? This is very confusing, right? What is the conclusion that we come with? Well, we have to understand that everything isn't necessarily a salvation issue. I think if you're a woman, you can take it a little bit more personal because it's like, oh, how can that be? I mean, but it's like, hmm. I mean, slavery is not even a sin. <laughs> so, so I mean, like, you know what I mean? And women are made, we're here to serve, meaning that's why, women are initially here um you know for all the career women who are modern minded who don't have this you know new set of ways of thinking um unless you're just preaching the gospel all day but um but here's the thing um so uh what does scripture say what does jesus say right jesus said that he, you know in the beginning it was not so he said it was man and woman right okay we see what david did we see the Sol solomon did another kings okay so so okay and then we see they didn't obey um deuteronomy 17 17 so what are the conclusions that we come with right in the new testament as a new testament disciple of yeshua what are the new what are the what are the conclusions that we come with right here's the thing right scripture says um jesus says in scripture that he who um does the least of these commandments and teaches those to you know to follow the least of these commandments um, shall be called least in the kingdom of God. So you're lowering your you're lowering your status in the kingdom of God. Okay, according to the way Jesus spoke. Okay, if you teach to do the least of these things, he said, because clearly it's a least. This is a situation that's a, a least type of situation. Um, it's not in the law of Moses. It's not in anything in the New Testament saying you cannot do this. Okay. Um, I mean, we see even effeminate men being called out that they'll go to hell. Um, so we have to consider, okay, well, how does God really look at polygamy if this be the case? So I would say wisdom would say in your collective, in your collectivity of, of, of scriptures and, and paying attention to scriptures and, and God's character throughout scriptures and seeing what he allowed, even though he said, don't do it. And then he also turned afterwards and said, he'll allow it. Or he'll say, I would have done it for you. I would have, you know, reasoned with you and did this with you. Now, you might not have been glad for what you asked for. Because when you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, when you see all these people, they're not really satisfied with what they asked for. You know what I mean? Um, 
not really Abraham because Abraham didn't have two wives. Oh, no, he did. Hagar. So, yeah, they're not never really happy for what they asked for. It's not a salvation issue, but they're not happy for what they asked for. It always ends in a bad situation. So I, I, I would tell men, why would you want to put yourself in a position that's not really going to, um, you know, end the way you asked for? Now, dig this. My father, the only woman who had his children out of all the women that he had as a wife at the same time was the one who he married first out of those three women that he had. Okay. Out of the three women that he had, the only one that God would give him children through was the first wife out of those three. Okay. Now my mother already had me. She was already married to him. And um, my brothers and sisters in New York, they already had the lady who I still call my stepmother, Ali. Um, but nonetheless, you know, um, yeah, he, out of those three in, in Senegal, when he moved to Senegal from um, out of Guinea to Senegal, the only one who he had children by was the one who he married first. So pay attention to how God does things. He's very, um, very uh, intentional, just like the song says. Um, love that song, by the way. And um, yeah, Jesus said, you know, uh, in the beginning it was not so, so. I mean, in, so in South Africa and in certain parts of West Africa, there are Christians with who practice polygamy. OK, they, they're they not Islam. They're not Islam influenced. They still practice the same traditions because in those in the in the Eastern world, whether you be Christian, whether you be a uh, Jew, you know, what I mean, whether you be, uh, you know, Islamic, a lot of those uh, traditions still stand. And so this is just. The raw reality is just that in America, it's illegal and in America, it's frowned upon and things of that nature. Just like when it comes to um, age, scripture talks about, um, you know, as long as she's deflowered, you know, um, things of that nature. Um, and I do want to add to hormones, eating bad diets and bad foods is what cause young girls to have a, a periods early on. Right. But a healthy diet, a clean diet it is usually in the teens and the late you know, 13s and stuff like that, 12 to 13, 14, up, stuff like that. But um, yeah, all that nine, eight stuff that people be trying to, you know, those rare cases of nines and eights, that's because of a poor diet. Look it up, do your own research. But anyway, um, yeah, so uh, yeah, those will be called least in the kingdom of God who keep the least of these commandments and to teach to, to do so. Um, you know, it doesn't say you won't make it into the kingdom of God, but you'll be considered the least okay um the, everybody's not going to be the same uh in the kingdom of god um they made it in but they're not going to necessarily be the same so anyway um i would consider those scriptures um and uh god bless you in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ all right peace